Welcome to Europe ECR. And our topic this morning is the great debate. You know that this year, the great debate dealt with a very, very hot topic. It is expanding the indication of TAVI toward low risk patients. It was a discussion, a very friendly discussion, between surgeon, represented here by our friend Thomas Walter, and the cardiologist, in fact, the interventionist, represented by Darren Miller. So, welcome, and let's put the first question to you. Do you agree about the definition of low risk? What is low risk patient for you? Please, Tom. Well, basically, there's difficult, uh, di di different factors. Age, of course, is an important factor. Most trials are being performed in patients 80 years mm -hmm. or older, so higher risk population. But I believe there's other factors besides age, besides lowering the age, some mm -hmm. aspects which are covered by one of the scoring systems. The SDS score is the most precise one in parallel to the Euroscore 2. Mm -hmm. Darren, you agree with that? Y yes and no. I mm -hmm. think that the... You're jesuistic or yes and no? <laughs> <laughs> the, the use of risk scores in, in TAVI patients is not is inherently mm. difficult because these scores were designed using surgical patients, mm. not TAVI patients. I think that the use of the risk scores was very reasonable mm. when we had uh, a technology that mm. was of unproven safety and efficacy. Mm. Um, but now we have a very safe, very reproducible technique. And determining who should get a TAVI and who should not get a TAVI based on a risk score that's not designed for the procedure is somewhat difficult. We, we do agree that we need trials in, in younger patients because all of our trial data so far is based on 80-year-olds, 81-year-olds. But as Tommy says, there are other factors that, that should also determine. So no no outcome. black and white. Huh? No, no black and white. Hot team. Probably. Is it a solution? Artem is a very yeah. important tool, I believe, mm. in all questionable patients. You need to get all the diagnostic testing. Mm. Then you look together at the patient and then mm. you go to the patient together and set the indication. Tell mm. him the outcome of this or that mm. procedure in your own hands, in your own hospital. Mm. Then you, you want to have mm. a good outcome for your patient. That's most important. Yeah. Okay, Agreed. so I think there is pretty uh, much a good agreement and... Uh, uh, we feel that now the, both communities are used to work together to exchange and to add on their expertise. So, to make a decision, you should know about the result of the procedure. And what's your opinion, Darren, about the immediate results of the TAVI in terms of efficacy and complication? How do you... I think, we have, a, I think we have a very safe, very yeah. efficacious procedure. We've demonstrated in large randomized control trials the TAVI is superior to medical therapy. In high-risk patients, it's superior to surgery. And in intermediate-risk patients, it's superior to surgery. That's in terms of all-cause mortality. But also, we see many important secondary endpoints, mm. such as significant reductions in major bleeding, mm. acute kidney injury, and better hemodynamic performance of the valves. However, it is important to mm. state that these outcome performances are early. 30 days, one year, and longer-term follow-up of these devices is certainly required. So, yes, it's I, crystal I agree. clear. We, we have really convincing data mm. that TAV mm. is a good tool for many mm. patients, the elderly, the higher risk. Mm. We don't have good long-term data yet. Mm. And basically, we are all believers in randomized trials. But what interests me as a physician in daily practice mm. is all comers' outcomes. Mm. So some registries may reflect a more realistic picture mm. than the selected randomized trials. Okay. But you do TAVI by yourself, Tom. Yeah. I really like it, yeah. all approaches. Yeah. I'm really happy. It's mm. a good procedure mm. for the right patient. Mm. Yes, very clear. And I okay. like to do it together yeah. with our cardiologist as a heart team. It's really good fun. You learn mm. from each other. It's it's great procedure. Okay. So we, we do agree surgical results in the low risk population are excellent in terms of mortality, etc. And the TAVI results you feel they are improving, really, dramatically improving well, I think in terms of safety. If we look at the STS um, mm. database and look mm. at outcomes mm. from TAVI patients undergoing surgery, low-risk mm. patients, mm. the average mortality in that database is about 1.7. Mm -hmm. As Tommy suggested, in a selected patient mm. population treated with the Sapien-3 mm. valve, mm. we see outcomes that are very similar. Mm. All-cause mortality about 1.1%. Mm. So they seem to be equivalent. Where we're lacking, the data we're lacking are younger patients, mm. longer-term follow-up, valve durability. Yeah. And those data are emerging, but more work is required. So that's a point. We, we Durability. Have a, have, have a 
have to place mm -hmm. a, a comment of caution, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Like, durability is an important point. We don't have long-term data yet. Of course, we can argue, like, mm. uh, some surgical valves haven't been evaluated in the long run, but durability means 10-year uh, functionality of the valve, mm. freedom from valve failure, and we, don't have, uh, we, we haven't reached mm. that. So there's interesting data mm. that came up yesterday, mm. the late-breaking session mm. uh, on... Uh, durability mm. from the early series mm. from mm. Vancouver and Rouen mm. and basically after five, six, seven years, mm. there's an increasing deterioration mm. rate, mm. obviously, of these uh, transcatheter mm. procedures of the first generation. What do you think, Darren? Uh, are you anxious about the durability of the TAVI valve or do you I feel we can manage that? I think that we, we need more information. We've had one small series, single center, first yeah, generation exactly. device. We have multiple devices, for example, with superannular leaflets, mm. um, with larger effective orifice areas, mm. uh, for example, with self-expanding mm. devices that could mm. give us better long-term mm. durability or indeed mm. may not. Mm. I think that, again, we need more data. Yeah. Um, certainly, I, I think that in, um, in intermediate risk patients, in high risk patients, the evidence is there. Yeah. Get treating your patients, offer them um, a, 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 a tabby. However, it's important to note that while durability is important, it is not as important as safety. If you have a procedure that reduces yeah. mortality, mm. that's more important, I think, than durability. And you do also agree from the surgical experience that the way the valve fail is an important point sure. and we haven't sure. heard about dramatic failure like with the mitral flow and also the valve in a valve. Do you have uh, any personal experience with TAVI into TAVI? Few cases yeah. and actually of course you can redo yeah. a TAVI valve yeah. into a TAVI valve pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's almost like a penalty kick if the first yeah. valve is in a good position mm -hmm. it's like soccer yeah. penalty straight straight yeah. shot. Um, However, when we talk about young patients, yeah. you don't want to have an early failure. You want to yeah. have longevity of the I valve agree. and I therefore agree. you need a perfect procedure. Okay, yeah. so friends, are you ready to do TAVI in all the low risk patients today? I think it's, again, it, am I ready to do TAVI in a 60 year old patient yeah. in the context of a clinical trial of a prospective registry? Yeah. Yes. Am I ready to do TAVI? in uh, low-risk patients mm. uh, who are of advanced age? Absolutely. Well, as I said, I believe you, we would need an all-comers randomized trial first to go to really younger patients. There are some trials coming up. Mm. An all-comers German trial mm. is on the horizon starting in autumn this year, and we are looking forward to those outcomes. So uh, I think we, when listening to you, you are pretty much in agreement. It's an excellent technique, improving, 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 but we are going to an unknown category of patient where we have to be extremely cautious. And both of you advise to go on with evidence and then follow the evidence. There are plenty of trial, but I would like to point, to stress what uh, Tommy said. It's very important to have all commerce trial, and probably there is room in Europe to do this, because uh, two trials which are starting in the US are probably not exactly the all commerce trial. So we are waiting for a result, and hopefully, as we discussed previously, a patient will derive the benefit from having two excellent techniques. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.